So the Chainsaw Man anime trailer has recently been released and I'm sure it's piqued a few people's interest. You may be one of those people and might be wondering what the hell even is Chainsaw Man? And why does everyone who talks about it seem utterly insane? Well, as one of those insane people, I'm making this video for you. I love this series a whole bunch and I'm sure you will too if you give it a shot. My name is Polly Macho, and for the time we have together, I want to tell you what Chainsaw Man is about, what makes it great, and what might make it your new favorite series. Because this manga has the potential to be one of the biggest shows for whatever season it comes out in. Let's begin. Sixteen-year-old Denji has got it pretty rough. At a young age, his father committed su- Not being alive anymore, and left Denji with a massive debt to the Yakuza, one he pays by selling parts of his body, such as an eye, a kidney, and even one of the family jewels. But his most recent job is being a devil hunter with his chainsaw dog and best friend Puchita, who is arguably one of the goodest boys in the series. Sooner or later, the Yakuza decide it's time to put the kid down as they form a pact with the zombie devil killing Denji and Puchita in the process. But before death takes either of them, Puchita gives Denji his demonic heart, promising to restore the life of his best friend on one condition, that Denji lives out the dreams they always talked about alone in their rundown shack. With this power, Denji becomes the being known as Chainsaw Man and immediately dispatches the zombies. Denji soon comes into contact with Makima, a devil hunter a part of the public safety division. She offers Denji of choice, either act as her pet and work as a devil hunter or be killed on the spot. Denji makes his choice and the rest of the manga focuses on the personal journey of Denji's growth as he battles horrifying devils and forms meaningful connections with others. So with that general overview, you may have an idea of how this show will work, possibly a Monster Hunter of the Week action manga with light bits of character progression. And to that I say, respectfully, not even close. Chainsaw Man is much more than its premise lets on. And one of the ways the series does this is how bonkers it can get. The absurdity of this series constantly pulls you in, discovering how deep this rabbit hole can go. And if you just wanted to get into a series where you can view some madness unfold, this series has that and so much more. I'm gonna list a few examples to give a little taste of what is to come. <clears throat> Our main cast forms a bond by making a contest of who can kick a criminal in the balls the hardest before the authorities arrive. One of the series' antagonists is Germany's Santa Claus. A fight culminates in Denji riding a shark devil fiend as they fight the typhoon devil, and one of my personal favorite things outside of the series, in a Shonen Jump popularity poll, a character was beaten in the rankings by their car which shows up for only three chapters. This series is one you never know what to expect, and that's part of the charm. When the peak of absurdity is constantly being topped, it makes the series so engaging. Because you have no idea what sort of wacky ass is gonna happen. It's great. Absurdity is all well and good, but if you're looking for interesting characters to get emotionally attached to, then Chainsaw Man has got you covered. Our main trio is highly fleshed out, with backstories explaining their upbringing and the actions they choose to take in the story. To guarantee you on this, I want to go a bit over the trio of Denji, Aki, and Power, let you know about their deal, and see if you're interested in them as characters. So to kick it off, let's talk about our main character, Denji. We've already gone over Denji's backstory, but I must expand on the point that Denji has had a rough upbringing. Because the things Denji values are things you and I may take for granted. Having a piece of toast with a variety of toppings or playing video games with a girl are the dreams Denji told Puchita. Because in their situation, those could only be dreams. But now that Denji is Chainsaw Man, they're now a possibility. So it's really fun to watch Denji as an underdog finally achieving the things he wants. Denji is also an entertaining protagonist because he offers such a unique perspective to the other characters. In one early example, the Eternity Devil has trapped the group in a hotel that could last forever. And while everyone is panicking, Denji cracks a smile and says, Awesome! That means we can sleep all we want! Because of the lack of any schooling of any kind, he first comes across as an idiot. Even Aki snarks if Denji even went to school, and when Denji replies no, Aki genuinely looks surprised at this. 
But what Denji lacks in a formal education, he makes up for with an eagerness to try ideas that rational people would consider ridiculous. And it's those ideas that often lead to surprising outcomes. But it's not just goofiness that makes Denji an endearing character, but also a sense of self-awareness and contemplation that feels real. I'll go into detail in a different section, but if you want it to be a surprise, feel free to start reading. It's there, trust me. Okay, up next is Aki, and at first glance, you may have an idea of what he's going to be. He's going to be the brooding, dare I say, edgy rival that rarely shares emotion, and I thought the same thing. And then in the same chapter he's introduced, Denji kicks him in the balls and it all gets thrown out the window. Aki's backstory is that his family was killed by a horrifying demon called the Gun Devil, with him being the only survivor. Aki decided to become a devil hunter because he wanted to kill the Gun Devil. While at first he acts like a brooding rival, it's done intentionally. In fact, other characters comment on how edgy he appears and how out of his depth he is. Comments that Aki acknowledges and agrees with, but it's only in continuing this series where you see his growth as a character and his progression into more than just a character archetype. And for the last of our trio, we have Power, a devil fiend who focuses on controlling blood. Power is selfish, egotistical, cruel, and dumb as a rock. And that's what makes her amazing. Power is unapologetic about who she is, and that sounds like it would be annoying, but it comes across as surprisingly charming. And what balances out her high opinion of herself is the fact that she is a total idiot, which itself is utterly hilarious to witness. Power's backstory involves her traveling the land, fighting creatures, and drinking their blood, because in her eyes, all life is trivial, and you should only focus on yourself. But that soon changes when she grows an emotional connection to her cat, Miaoi. Power is fantastic because of her strong characterization, but it's even better when bouncing off other characters. In particular, her moments with Denji are comedy gold, as the two are so different, yet so similar, because in some cases, the two share a single brain cell. One example involves them attempting to develop an idea in a fight, so they begin wearing glasses because that's what smart people do. There are plenty of other exciting and entertaining characters in Chainsaw Man, such as the surprisingly kind-hearted violence fiend, Aki's devil hunting partner Himiko who balances a playful demeanor with a grim outlook that motivates her actions, and Kobeni who's kept in the story to suffer for our entertainment. But I wanted to focus on our leading trio because this video is more of an introduction to the series. I want to give a general view that hopefully engages ages you in reading the manga and discovering these characters yourself. Okay, so now you got to know the characters a bit more, it's an excellent time to discuss the context of Chainsaw Man's setting. Throughout this video, I've been throwing around the word fiend. It's only fair to explain what that means. So in the world of Chainsaw Man, there are devils based off particular things, such as organisms or objects. Things like the pig devil or the tomato devil. The devil hunters in the public safety division are in charge of eliminating the devils and fiends that cause a disturbance to the general public. But three particular factors make this a bit more complicated than at first glance. First, a devil's power is based on how many people fear its concept. For a more understandable example, think of how many people are subscribed to a YouTube channel, but more focused on how terrified they are of it. So something like the coffee devil won't be intimidating. I'm so sorry. But something like the ghost devil is a much more significant step up. And the particular devil Aki is trying to kill, the gun devil, is so powerful that it was reported that for the 26 seconds the gun devil was in Japan, it killed over 57,912 people. Yeah, it is absolutely insane and utterly terrifying how devastating a devil can be. So how do humans combat beings this powerful that could destroy them with a single touch? That brings us to the second factor, contract devils. Some devils work with humans and offer their powers, whether for genuine concern or selfish desire, who can say? But a contract must be made to make this work. The more power a human asks for, the higher price they must pay the devil they contracted. So an example being, Himiko offered her right eye to utilize the specter arm of the ghost devil, and it is a major cause of alarm when a devil asks for what sounds like such a minimal request. But the third aspect is the fiend or hybrids that have the powers of a devil with a human's consciousness. This is the category Denji falls in, and a hybrid is ridiculously powerful because if given blood, any wounds they suffer instantly regenerate. And that detail brings us into our next aspect, the fights. 
The fights in Chainsaw Man are definitely on par with the absolute insanity in the story beats. Confrontations with devils and hybrids are visceral and bloody. There's always some sort of dynamic movement taking place within a battle, constantly using elevation as a way to heighten the experience. It's pretty standard for characters to be fighting while in mid-air or attempting to escape a foe. And especially for the hybrids, it allows characters to get hurt badly without cheapening the impact of wounds. So if a hybrid suffers a mortal injury, as long as they have a source of blood, they can still continue fighting. And those ridiculous solutions I mentioned earlier in Denji's section make their way into fights with some really memorable payoffs. Early on during the battle with the Eternity Devil, it constantly boasts about how it holds all the cards because he trapped the group in a time limbo until Denji gives up his heart. So Denji has the idea to fight the devil and chop it up so many times it will actively wish for death and they can go home. And this takes a total of three days of non-stop fighting before the Eternity Devil begs for death and lets Denji kill him. Even in the fights of Chainsaw Man, you never know what to expect, besides being enthralled and entertained with the carnage on display. But the carnage isn't just one way. Characters in the series have the looming threat of death at any moment, especially so for the human characters. And you should know this now, because characters frequently die in Chainsaw Man. Characters aren't given time for any parting words to their friends. Deaths happen suddenly and unexpectedly. Even attempts at a heroic sacrifice can end up being utterly pointless. Being in the main cast doesn't save characters from deaths or fates that are far worse. This is a series that can be considered bleak in how its characters' fates are treated. After all, devil hunting is a dangerous profession, so why wouldn't it be? But this threat of death makes all of the ridiculous parts so much more meaningful and enjoyable. After all, if a character has the possibility of dying the next chapter, why not make the most out of the random shenanigans they get into? So Chainsaw Man has plenty of things going for it. It's got a zaniness to it that makes it fun and exciting, complex and interesting characters to get you invested, and visually pleasing and turn-paging fights. So what else does it need? Well, it's got something else going for it that is hard to put into words. If I had to try, I would say it's got humanity. It's a fictional story with some insane moments, but it also has instances that feel real. Intimate and genuine moments that feel like lived experiences and not just made up on the spot. I want to go over one of my favorites. Chapter 12, titled Squeeze. And yes, it's going where you think it does. Up to this point, Denji has been attempting to keep his promise to Puchita and living his dreams to the fullest, deciding that his new goal is now touching a girl's balloons. So he makes a deal with his new co-worker power to save her cat Miaoi in exchange for touching her balloons. And after suffering a betrayal and fighting the bad devil, the time finally comes to get what he aspired for. And when he does, nothing changes. Denji becomes filled with a sense of emptiness upon getting what he wants. Power laughs it off and pieces out, leaving Denji alone with a sense of unfulfillment for the entire day finally articulating his feelings to Makima, saying, I, I finally got a hold of this dream I'd been chasing for the longest time. But once I finally got my hands on it, it was way less life-changing than I expected. And now I'm like, when I go after different dreams in the future and get my hands on them, am I gonna realize I was actually happier during the chase then too? Isn't that just... crap? It's a surprisingly insightful moment. Yeah, it's about a silly thing, but honestly, who gives a shit? If you break any sort of gold down, ultimately it's equally pointless. It's a fleeting experience that will end in a similar feeling of emptiness once it's done. The sentiment that Denji expresses feels real, because it is. I've had that feeling before, and I'm sure you have too. I haven't read many series that express a feeling I've actively experienced and let me know it's okay. It's normal to feel that way. And that same series can show me a guy morphing into a shark fighting a lady that can turn her head into a bomb. It's incredible. And I think that should about wrap it up. I can't think of anything else I forgot to mention. Makima is the best thing about Chainsaw Man. When I think about what makes this series perfect, my immediate reaction is Makima. She's such a pillar of stability in this cruel and brutal world. 
She drinks with the boys and girls. She likes dogs and she's the best fate. Excuse me, choice for Denji. But my favorite thing about Makima and the reason why I like her is because... Because... <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I'm just trying to figure out why do I like Makima? <laughs> well, uh, regardless though, if you're looking for the whole best girl thing in a series, well, uh, look no further. It's obviously Makima. I mean, woof. <laughs> Chainsaw Man is so sick. It's got enough wackiness to draw people in, complex characters to keep people invested, and fights to have them on the edge of their seats, with observations from the author that speak personally to the reader and their experiences. I hope you're willing to take a journey into this series because there's nothing quite like it, and it's worth your time. But if that doesn't sound like your thing, that's cool too. My name is Polly Mancho. Thank you for watching. If you do decide to give this series a shot, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Feel free to leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and subscribe if you want to see my future work. See you in the next one. Take care.